Hello, 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 and welcome to My City Skylines 2 City. I know, I know, it's kind of huge, it's kind of a mess, and isn't City Skylines 2 that game that's getting a whole lot of flack right now for being a kind of a mess? It sure is, but I have been loving it anyway. The performance is kind of not that great at all, and so in this video you'll even see that the video is a bit blurry because my computer just can't keep up. You'll see all these lags and these stutters and a bunch of graphical issues and CPU issues. My computer is just keyed in my room right now. But I just wanted to show off this City Skylines 2 city because it is my first city. In the entire months that City Skylines 2 has, has been out, I have spent over a hundred hours on this city just building and working it up to be over 225,000 people in population and over a billion dollars in city funds. By no means is this a small city, but it is all done in vanilla. The reason why I'm showing this off is because I can't really play on this world anymore. The simulation speed is so bad that I have to keep the game paused right now so that it doesn't overload my CPU while I'm recording. I'm at over 225,000 people, which means that I cannot reasonably expand much further. While I can keep on growing, it takes hours for any building to grow to full height in the city at this point. None of my simulation changes are really having an impact. And to be completely honest, I think that I just need mods. When I am building things like this university campus, it is quite frankly a nightmare to work on. The center of campus, much as I try to add energy and life into it, just feels dead and lifeless, with trees that will never grow because the simulation speed is so bad. And with just no real texture or detail, no line tools, key walls that are just impossible to place because you have to do them on a cliff and the cliff is uneven, and oh what a mess. I need mods, but I do not want to add them to this city. This city, again, is my first city that I ever played in City Skylines 2, and it's the only city that I've ever played in City Skylines 2, and there are a lot of things in this city that still represent those issues. And so, before I move on to starting my new city with mods, and maybe even some recorded YouTube videos about it, I just want to go through and give a tour of all of the parts of this city, good and bad, and walk you through the developments of the city piece by piece. So let's jump into it and I hope you enjoy. Let's start down here in the very first town that I ever made in City Skylines 2. I have not touched this town since I first developed it. One of the things I saw in Biva's first videos was the power of adding key walls with roundabouts in them. And so, of course, look what I've done. I made first thing that I did was I made a key wall around the water and put some houses against it. You can actually see that I have not touched this since the start of the game because the water level has dropped. It used to be that the water level was way up here, so the key walls didn't look too crazy, but they did still of course have some issues because it's the first thing that I ever made in the game, but it was a bunch of fun. We've got our totally realistic floating power lines that connected from where the initial starting tiles border was right over here, over the water, and into our transformer station. This area was a lot of fun to do, but at the time I didn't fully understand the ways of contours or how this would end up shaping up in the end, and I just slowly began to expand our make our way towards the main highway. At the time there was a very simple interchange over here, which just led straight down on Franklin Street, and on Franklin Street I began to consolidate some of my uses. I put industrial way over here, initial residential over here, and then the very first bits of commercial way up here by the interchange and by the highway and by the main street. Over time, the surrounding area around this initial single-family cliffside development has gotten changed a little bit. I've kept the single-family, I've kept the starting bits of industry over here, and I kept this shopping area over here, but what has grown is I've upzoned a lot of this into these beautiful row houses around the initial elementary school, which is full, oh boy, unsurprising, I added a bunch of mixed-use buildings along Franklin Street, and eventually, as traffic built up on this two-lane highway from people commuting to work in the industrial district from the main highway and from surrounding neighborhoods, I even added the second layer of a highway on top of Franklin Street to create a double-layer look that is just kind of a mess in my favorite of ways. One of the things that I did initially in the city, and for quite a while too, was I used a tiered way of terraforming where I created pads every eight or so meters, and then I just built a little bit of a slope between them so that the buildings were all on flat pads. 
Over time, it began to abandon this as I got lazier, but you can see these flat, this flat pad type of terraforming all the way through a lot of my early industrial districts and early regions of the game, especially like over here, you can see how they even interact with the zoned industry. Next up, it was time to expand towards a college area. After building a city hall right across from the original cemetery, just to show this is the original location of it, I expanded out with a bunch more medium density and then started the foundations of a grid. Once we started to get to this college area, as I mentioned, I decided to change things up a little bit. I made a little bit of a featured park and then I added what is one of my favorite parts of the city is a mass housing project. This is a high density, low cost, not quite low rent housing because those kept on abandoning themselves, but very uniform style of style of development all in one major block with a lot of mixed-use facilities, kind of similar to Stuyvesant Village if you've ever been there in New York City. It's just this mass of mass housing buildings all along with each other creating its own unique community with only a few entrances going in and out. Around it I then made, I then made various other grids that were somewhat based off of each other but somewhat independent of just endless single-family sprawl creating curves that ran up the hill, and a center of density and development, which at this point <laughs> is all the most beautiful business petroleum. In this, I was basically expanding my way back towards the mountains as far as we could go in hopes of reaching some of these sweet deposits of resources, and as I pushed all the way back, I realized I think that we need a little bit more space. So before I even developed my downtown, I expanded over to this other side. I built these in initial interchanges, which have still not changed, off of the highway to run into this sprawling development, which is actually based off of a master planned suburb, Vienna, Texas. So I'm just going to highlight that there is a sawmill lake and a star lake over here. There's a major boulevard and a roundabout over here. There are elementary and middle schools down here. And so let's take these, the lake, the major boulevard, and the roundabout, and the middle schools over to City Skylines, where we have the lake, the major boulevard, and the roundabout, and the elementary schools and high school over here. So I tried to copy this Siena, Siena Texas map as best as I possibly could, but of course I ran into some limitations with City Skylines too. You can't add water sources at a certain elevation, and so I just have these super duper weirdly low lakes with huge cliffs, that looks somewhat okay from above, but when you zoom in, they just kind of confuse you. Don't really look that great in 3D either. Just some of the downsides, some of the reasons that I want to start playing with mods, and really hope that the future of this game changes a little bit. Anyway, I buffed up the surrounding area around here with the farms, and then I began to zone for a downtown. Along the border of that Siena master plan called for a decent amount of park or farmland around here, and so I use that as a buffer between the suburban developments and this main new downtown. And because this is a master planned area, I distinctly wanted it to not feel like natural growth. I wanted everything to be incredibly uniform, and so we had some blocks of high rises with major rows of very uniform heights, uniform distance from the highway buildings. After filling out basically this entire huge area, I then moved up to the main downtown, which currently seemingly has a whole lot of dead people. The main downtown, I took that same strategy that I used in Siena downtown and did it largely by blocks of uses. If we look at individual blocks, you can see how they're mostly high density, some of them are split up a little bit, but for the most part they're high density or mid-density mid uses that are split up by use. It's not particularly mixed use, it's very distinct. But what that ends up doing is that it creates a pretty nicely varied, varied skyline. It's incredibly dense, just like I want it to be for the primary downtown of the region, but it's not overwhelming in any way. It's very distinct, everything is very organized and logical, just as I would like it in this case. I then saw, just conveniently before starting this downtown, a tutorial by Imperator on how to create a sunken highway. And so, of course, I had to do that. Create a sunken highway with a bunch of pedestrian and normal bridges going through it, a whole bunch of lane changes and overpasses, and this has gone through a few minor changes, but for the most part, it's remained the same as it was. One of the big challenges with this was that we had this major highway that ran all the way to our city connections way at the outside, ran past all of these uses. This intersection was pretty major, but there was also a little bit of an elevation difference between these two, and a lot of space constraints as I didn't want to use eminent domain on some already developed buildings on either end of this area. And so we have this kind of wonky little flyover with a loop-de-loop -loop that runs into a rapidly deteriorating acceleration lane before you get have to exit past the exit lane. 
it's kind of a weird highway situation and I kind of love it, just that little bit of extra jank that makes the city look feel slightly more realistic. Let me just take a moment to appreciate this view with high rises on either side of us and looking towards the downtown Sienna way over there. Anyway, with downtown finished in development, I felt like it was lacking a little bit of character. You have this rapid fall off to this side, which is pretty unique, but I felt like both of these areas on either end were a little bit lacking. And so, I decided that we would just transform this area with a whole bunch of special buildings. I added stadiums and the ferris wheel and a bunch of housing up on the hilltop. I made this whole waterfront pedestrianized and added some little boating areas. I added just a whole bunch of stuff in this area that I think makes it feel really special. Very pedestrian focused, very waterfront like. And it's just a very unique retail and shopping and tourism area of the city with, of course, the big view tower overlooking it. And when I was happy with that, I then moved to the other side of downtown and created a city services district. The city services district was really the hub for all of these new buildings that I'd unlocked by reaching these population milestones and all these development points. Uh, this is where I put down all the big buildings, like a server farm and wastewater treatments, and a full big fire station and big police headquarters, disease control center, hospital, medical university, pharmaceuticals company, and the biggest post-storing facility that the region had seen. All of this was anchored by a big cemetery that felt kind of like a park and then a large plaza off to the side of the disease control center. This created a really, really unique area, but I wasn't happy with it yet. I decided that it was finally time to add some basic public transport into the region. And so I did. I took this largely undeveloped piece of land, added the first tram depot to the region, and then drew out a number of tram lines that ran through each of these major parts of the city. And my favorite one of all is the downtown loop. This downtown loop runs past this main elevated highway, down the hill, and past this beautiful, beautiful city services district along the water before making its way back up the hill, past, this ele past these elementary schools and single-family housing, into downtown, past all of these more schools and some train stations and parking and all of this stuff, and just makes a big loop around downtown. It was just a whole lot of fun to begin to design this transportation. Right now we have 34, nearly 35,000 citizens per month who run on our, who run on our tram lines with a large part of that usage coming from this line that runs through the historic areas, the industrial district and the suburbs in mid-density, from our tourism district line, and of course, our city loop line that I mentioned earlier. Now, at this point, I had a whole lot of this whole area developed and a lot of this this side of the highway developed, so I just wanted to finish off this part of the, of the island. Oh, this is all still focusing on the areas that are closer to the water. And so this is where I created a second city services, but more industrial focused area. This is where I added the nuclear power plants with its own water tr wastewater treatment facility right on the water, using some key walls using a new technique from Infrastructurist, which made the key walls on the water a lot easier. Just fill in the land around it, then place the key walls, and then clear, then re then let the water back in so you don't have to worry about too much water notifications. And it's around this time that I began to set up train service. I added a cargo train terminal and a large train roundabout, which was really the core of the anchor the anchor points for this whole area. Well, game crashed. Oh, alright, we're back. Where were we? Ah, uh, yeah, train stations. Okay, so I added some train stations and some roundabouts into this area, and then I continued to use this previously undeveloped land and added a rail yard, where I created a mess. Don't look at that intersection yet. I created a mess of rail lines that connected to a cargo train terminal by this industrial district, a bunch of roundabouts, and just expanded this expanded this rail mess through to create some of our first train stations. And then had a train line that ran all the way around past here, knowing that I would place our first airport there soon enough, and then expand then ran this line down past downtown, created a bunch of train stations there, then ran it into this new city services district and kept on running that train line all the way down across the waterfront into this brand new section of town. This is where finally I started to experiment with airports. In our first city airport expansion, I ran these train lines that connected to both of them and I connected to an international airport and a local airport. You can see just how many how many lines we've got going on over here. And despite that, these are remarkably unused just because of how City Skylines handles its simulation. It's a little bit lackluster, but hey, what can you do? This international airport became the foundation for this entire area on this side of the highway. 
I wanted this to really have that big airport type of feeling. So I wanted to have crazy intersections and a one-way road and just a whole dedicated airport area. And then I created a bunch of just kind of janky intersections that connected off of this main one-way highway. I had them so that we had a distinct airport loop as well that linked into the main airport area. I created a little transit area with the bus stations and international transit. And then I created, of course, every international hotel, every international airport has its own grand hotel. So I put that there along with a large parking structure in the middle of the airport so that it doesn't intersect with either of the runways. Put a, put a subway station there in preparation for some transit design I knew that I was going to do soon and then just made sure it was connected to the railroad on both ends. Then off to the side, I wanted some huge buildings that would really look like they were just some maintenance facilities, and so I put down some of our main industrial things, like this huge vehicle factory, and connected that with its own exit and entrance ramp onto this one-way highway, its own industrial district, and then just put some single family around it here in the middle. And then with this intersection that connected into the interstate, this is hard to follow at this point, oh geez. I said that we had this one-way highway that ran through the airport, but then coming from the other direction, I branched it off into this brand new area. I thought, hey, I know we have some flatland over here, but for, and some flatland over here, and some flatland behind this mountain, but for the most part, we've gotten through a lot of our flatland at this point. I've done this main island, I've done this main I've done this main peninsula, this main peninsula, and this whole jutting this whole outcrop that juts into the water. And so I want to do a little bit of mountaintop development. Just a little playtest of some ideas. I brought a highway through our industrial district way up here, in accordance with the master plans from Siena, of course. And then I took that up the hill, weaving around, keeping the grade pretty minimal, adding sound barriers as kind of these gates, because in vanilla we don't have any type of fences or anything like that. So adding sound barriers just as protection from the curves all the way up into the snowy mountaintop up here, where I decided to just test out how mountaintop development would work. It turns out a lot of the mountaintops in this area have pretty good plateaus once you reach the top, and so I could create some little neighborhoods that are more spaced out than they were down there, and just had some special areas up here, like some of the special residential buildings, like the Painter's Mansion, and the Film Actor's Mansion, and the Rock Musician Mansion, which have some of the best views of this city. You can see all of the downtowns, all of the developments sprawling out in front of you, and especially in winter. I took this bridge that I took this bridge and I began to snake it up through the mountains, connect it, connect it all the way around, add some larger switchbacks with less steep hills, a lot more gradual, keeping under the 10% 10% grade that we hope to have. I ran it through this whole area. Imagine none of this is developed at the time. Ran it around, ran it around, then it had this very shocking pinch point over here where we want this to be a big boating corridor that wasn't added until very recently, but I knew that I was going to have boats in this area, and I, so I couldn't expand this diagonally, and so we have this sharp, sharp curve over here, which I think just makes a really unique area. This would likely be a pinch point, and I would love to see how this would develop over time. So we did some pretty big, pretty big mountainside highway development, kept things super narrow, super tight with each other, and just kept on running it down, running it down, until we got to our other airport, as which as I mentioned was brand new with a train line running past it, got to this other airport, and that's where we had our the secondary smaller airport's highway interchange. Then I just kept on running it past this river, past these high farms didn't exist yet, this interchange didn't exist yet, and then just over to this nice happy little loop, loop-de-loop -loop interchange. Just a kind of simple highway that runs across the back of the map creating a secondary cross-county interstate. Then I started to develop around this new highway. First, I created this little this little hillside town over here. I put some farms lower down, closer to the water, and then I consolidated the development up on this plateau. This is still not too high up off the water, but it's a crazy high, crazy high city. I didn't add too crazy of entrance ramps or entrance ramps either. It's just kind of a mess of highways in the center area, which I think creates makes it a little bit more unique. Then we have a central pedestrian road that runs through this whole district and connects over to our prison. By this point, I'd seen that Imperator was using these specialized industry as kind of a surface painter, so I decided to give that a try and make this like a concrete island. I don't think it worked out too well, but again, oh, game crash, again. That said, this was a pretty interesting development, especially to have it consolidated on a pedestrian street, but I don't think that it's a particularly realistic type of thing. So then I continued on, on the mountainside. I tried to make it a little bit more realistic this time, embracing the highways, but instead going for the complete opposite, where rather than having this beautiful pedestrianized main street, 
we have this huge, huge six lane with parking strode that runs through as a primary arterial arterial and a ton of crazy highway intersection weirdness and jank from multiple intersections that are super close together linking towards each other creating just all these different connections at different elevations and all that stuff as the highway runs up oh what an americanized strode filled arterial road filled car focused mess this was and I love it. Whole huge community anchored by a technical university and a Hadron Collider. Hadron Collider, by the way, just, just, just saying it's my least favorite asset in the game. Like, what is going on? I started to add some communities that ran down the hill, expanding our density whenever there was a plateau, but for the most part keeping it basic single family wherever we could. I think there's a lot of jank over here that was largely caused by not being able to pre-grade slopes or post-grade slopes or to find where we wanted key walls or cut and fill walls or anything like that. There's a lot of jank along those hills, but I do like the concept of the communities that we ended up doing. After taking a little bit of break from the game, I kept on moving and created this big hilltop plaza, where I realized that I had a ton of major special buildings that I just hadn't placed down yet. And so I wanted to make a very special district just for that. So I centered this major new plaza on a fountain with Notre Dame off to one side and a university off to the other, I put the botanical garden on over here and pedestrianized this whole region. I then took a little bit of Imperator advice and created a plaza area over here where you have some shops by the parking lot that connects between the university and this er this whole area. And it really just creates a unique vibe to this whole er this side of this this side of the mountaintop. Then I added some then I added a whole bunch of pathways to kind of create a hiking type of feeling. Made some viewpoints so that you can overlook this beautiful airport that we have and the ocean off to that side. Then expanding out of that pedestrianized area by where we have our highway, I added all of these more special buildings. We added a National Diet Building, Gallery of Art, the South Korean Nemedium, Central Intelligence Bureau, Prince Palace, Central Bank, Chirpex Space Center, Bell Tower of Xi'an, Nasiniola, all of that stuff. And then I just decided to connect it all up. I really wanted to make this very mountaintop community type of vibe, and I think we accomplished that. But it was really solidified when I added in our trams. I added some trams that looped around these pedestrian areas, looped around the whole island, and it just made it a lot more special. But we weren't done yet. In order for this area to not become totally congested by this one in and out point, I added a subway network throughout the entire city. And it's kind of in a it's kind of in a checkerboard fashion. And then we can see we have these lines that run up and down the city on all sides, and we have a whole bunch of cross connectors that run through this airport area, through this through Siena on the south, middle, through the north, and some industrial areas up here. We did not connect this car-centered area with all of its roads, but we did connect this high-density area. Then we linked a lot of it through the downtown, through the historic, ter historic district, and then I added three special stations into the special touristy area and these lines get a whole lot of use it makes the space feel so much more special then of course i had to link all these to the airports on both sides of town which is why we had that subway station over there as a footer for a whole bunch of lines and the same thing for this international airport over here we crashed shocking this game man why can't it be a functional game it's such a good game but it's just so broken. With that chaos out of the way, I seriously have no idea where I am. That took so long to get back up and running. Ah, yeah. University. But now I wanted to create this whole new university area. And boy, this would have been so much easier with mods. Pretty big. This whole area is a pretty big hill, and I wanted to cut into that hill, push some dirt around, and make a little bit of a pad to have both a college and a university, as well as some shared dorms for them, and a office building that would be ideally the university's office building and the colleges for a lot of their staff and for administration purposes and anything along those lines i'm proud of this area i love how it plays with the hill i love how it gets the views downtown how it's right by the highway i love the whole concept behind this but without mods it just i can't i can't do it just to finish off this world i decided to finally develop these last two stretches of land. I added a subway yard over here to begin with and then continued that focus on education throughout this district where I added a university with a lot of parking and some row houses on a steep historic hill that runs up to it, a dedicated subway stop and then expanded our train line through this region with some stops, some more connections, some subway connections, and a whole lot of industry. 
At this point, I also started to add some of, the, some of these farming areas, which I really like the look of, and I think I should embrace more in any of my future cities. I also created this crazy intersection over here, which could have been improved by, for sure. But really, I just wanted to connect off to this, connect off of this side highway to create a new highway that would run across this across this district through these new areas and serve as a main connection, as a major connection point for this new for all these new areas. These new areas were mostly single family with some with some corridors of retail. I repeated that around the farms as well, and any of these patches added just some single family and some retail. In this area, closer to the big industry, I added some major plants with some parking and just filled out this industrial area, but again, kept the focus largely on single family area. Then as we got closer to the university and our schooling areas, I started to build up some density, put some row homes here, which I think looks really cool. Just row homes that back up onto the train tracks. Oh, I love it. And then finally, I built a bridge that connected into our historic area where we had that cool college and development from earlier. And just to finish things off, I finally added in some remaining industrial and a little bit of single family over here. Some cargo harbors as well as a normal harbor, and I connected those to outer connections as well as building an interior harbor by this tourism district that I showed off earlier by downtown, just to have some nice connect ship connection lines and finally add our ship lines underneath this bridge. We then had a bronze statue, which I originally had over here because it kind of felt like a nice place, but then I noticed that the lines were all going to be running through this corridor, so I added this statue is a welcoming sign for either way if you're going downtown or, or if you're going towards the airport in this this district over here. I like how it uses up the space, it fills things up pretty well, and overall just having these ships in here finishes up the atmosphere that I really wanted from this game. I'm not going to deny that there are some huge foundational issues with City Skylines 2, and I've experienced a lot of them even just in this video. You've seen how janky things can be, how much easier things could be with mods, and how slow and how many crashes there are and the graphical bugs and the simulation bugs and my PC just heating up, all of the assets looking the same, so little diversity, trees that never grow, highways that never get traffic that is used correctly. There are some major issues in this game, but despite that, oh, there has to be some kind of irony. As I'm about to say how much I'm enjoying this game, it crashes. Like, really City Skylines 2? Really? I should note that these crashes are because I'm recording. They don't happen during normal gameplay, but that does not make them acceptable. As I was saying, I'm willing to put up with a lot of the weird, janky bugs that this game has just because I have so much fun experimenting with things like sunken highways with density changes and highway changes, creating weird, crazy loops and all sorts of things. But I do think that there are some fundamental problems. City Skylines 2 has so, so much potential. It's such a gorgeous game. It has so many things going well for it. And yet, there are so many instances where it's very nearly unplayable. Simulation speed not even working, major high rent, high land value bugs, children living alone, very little asset diversity, no modding support for months after release, and just, there are so many things that I think City Skylines 2 has the potential to be amazing. If you look at some of the mods that are out there right now, they could very, very well be integrated into the base game, but they're not, and I... Quite frankly, I can't tell you why. Why things like tree controllers weren't, and historical starts weren't better built into this game. I would have loved to start this game in the 1920s or something like that, with cars barely coming out, a focus on trams, maybe even some carriages and horses still around. But that's not the world we're in. We're in a world where this is really just a game to make beautiful downtowns with repetitive skyscrapers, and impressive as the simulation is in this game, there's so many issues with it that just make me not care about it. I'm basically making infinite money at this point, despite so many foundational issues with my city. And to be honest, there's not much that I can do about that besides start anew. And in real life, as I've mentioned in the past on this channel, I'm an aspiring architect. And I want to be able to design sites and design buildings and plots of land and really plan things as they would be intended and not just zone out random buildings and just hope that what spawns there is what you're hoping for. The game is good at taking things slow to keep the simulation manageable and focusing on the details. And it's not built for looking at the focusing on the details, and that's where the mods come in. The mods let you play the game the way that it was supposed to be designed, and that's the unfortunate thing about City Skylines 2. It's not 
designed the way it's supposed to be played and it's really unfortunate. With all that said, I just want to finish off by looking at some of the statistics for this crazy, crazy city with its high rent, its death waves and all of that stuff. We have we have capacity for 21,000 cars in all of our par parking facilities across the city. We're sitting at a traffic flow of about 64% and if we look at our traffic volume, you can see all of the major roads that run through the city and we are producing 1.2 gigawatts of power. We have, we have healthcare capacity for nearly 3,000 people crematoriums for nearly 1500 cemetery capacity of 10,000 we pr we can process we can process 67,000 tons of garbage per month we have a thousand criminals in the city with a astounding 53% crime success rate which as I found out is mostly because the simulation cannot simulate the police cars well enough so they can't stop the stop the crimes or fires for that matter in time we have 36 thousand children in elementary school, two thousand in high school, and nearly ten thousand in university. We have over a hundred and fifty thousand citizens on our public transit per month, and we are processing ninety-two thousand tons of cargo per month in this city. We have we process four hundred and fifty thousand items of mail per month. We receive twenty thousand tourists per month with a city attractiveness of a hundred and fifty seven. Our average land value is fifty two thousand dollars per cell. Our profitability for everything is near one hundred percent. We've tapped into almost all of the available natural resources within the map. We have nearly 200,000 workplaces with 160,000 employees for them. Our city is 20% children, 60% adults, and 15% seniors. With 5% unemployment, 13,000 people moving to the city every month, and a total population of, tw of 227,000. 567 people at the time of this recording. This city has been a lot of fun to play in. I've been proud of every single expansion that I've made, and I'm happy with seeing how I've come. From building these initial starting suburbs, to now developing vibrant, mixed-use downtown areas, this game has been so much fun to play, but I'm really excited for seeing what's going to come next in my cities. I've used up all- the, I've used up a lot of the land on this map, I've built as far as I could build, as much as my creativity can take take me, and as much as my patience for Vanilla City Sands can take me. And so, before we crash again as we approach five minutes since the last crash, <laughs> I will catch you in the next video where I hopefully show you the start of my modded City Skylines 2 world. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye bye!